Parenting can actually be filled with similar emotions. You're excited for your kids when they move away to college, but you're deeply missing them at family dinner. You're happy they're starting junior high, but sad you have no more children in elementary school for that upcoming Halloween parade. You know, we often view happiness and sadness as conflicting emotions, but my next guest says it's important to invite grief as a companion to your joy. She believes they can and do exist at the same time. Therapist Tristan Hodson is joining me. So great to see you. Thanks for having me. I love your approach to this and I love your lens. And we were just chatting during the commercial break. Mm -hmm. You know, the women, if, if we look at the online influencer world, the women who first started to share their lives with us 20 years ago in the throes of young motherhood, they're now in this phase. They're now yeah. approaching empty nesthood. And so I think for that reason, it feels like this year, more than any other year, we're being inundated with this, this grief, if I can use that word, yeah. as moms transition, as women transition, as nests become empty and as kids progress, it's a heavy feeling. Well, and I'm glad you said, I hope I can use grief because I don't think we name grief enough. I think we're like, oh, I'm just sad. I'm just bummed. I'm more irritable. And it can all be grief as we're navigating these losses. Because I think when we were little, we recognized loss when like grandma or grandpa died. And we're mm -hmm. like, whoa, that's really big. Mm -hmm. And then as I've gotten older, I'm like, oh, I'm experiencing loss almost daily in mm -hmm. different ways. And so I started to recognize and name it of like, oh, this is grief mm -hmm. and oh surprise I'm it's not just like this one and done it's ongoing in my it's life a drip. it is there and but I think what I've seen is I've allowed grief in it has softened parts of me and made me really present like I had this tender mm. moment with my son who's starting high school and it is like I'm gonna hold the tears because talking about grief brings up grief I'll try to help but I might <sighs> not be but just having him um transition yeah. and he and I were celebrating like you're starting high school you're in this new phase yeah and then that night we were both crying to be like yeah. oh my gosh this is the end of this and he's my oldest yeah and it was such a tender sacred moment for me yeah. that I'm like oh I wouldn't wish this away mm -hmm. and I want all of these emotions to be present. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, Mark and I were having a similar conversation and we're in younger transitions, but still I think the weight can, can land just as hard. And I found myself almost like in defense mode, like don't get me wrong, I'm so excited because I am. Yes. I'm so excited for Emmy as a teenager. I'm just sad I can't yeah. swaddle Emmy as a baby. And when they're both there together, it's almost a weird conflict, like an internal conflict we feel. Well, my, so my middle is the queen of this. She has often moments where she's like, I am, nervous sighted. I'm like, what's that? And she's like, I am both <laughs> nervous and yeah. I'm excited. And she's like, so I'm just nervous sighted. I'm not going to choose either one because they're just her. both there. And I'm like, ah, oh, that's just it's a, good a perfect way to do example. Yes. Of we can feel this grief and we can feel this joy. I've been thinking about this as I've been reading so many friends' journeys on social media and the influencers that I referenced are part of that group. I've been thinking like, is it, is it, helpful or healthy to talk about it this much. My grandma didn't talk about it at all. No. You know what I mean? And so do you find that, uh, what, what's the balance there between expressing ourselves, feeling the emotions, letting it out, and also like managing this in a healthy adult way? Yeah, I think that's a really important part because we can, we can have this idea or sense that if I think, if I feel the grief, I'm gonna miss the moment. Mm. And my other friend and I had this ritual when our kids were growing up through elementary, where we would go, I'd go over to her house before the night before school, take her a little gift, and we'd be like, oh my goodness, our babies are getting so big, and like, be sad, sad, sad. And then we'd step in the next day and be like, nailed that first day, yeah. like, look at, they're so big, and celebrate those first day of school pictures. Yeah. When we name it, it can flow through us. When we do it in community, it normalizes it. But it's when we don't name it and we try to hold it in that it can spill out in more dysfunctional ways, mm. such as the irritability toward a situation that's not even relevant, mm -hmm. to just be like, yeah, today was hard. I'm, I'm feeling the, the loss of this stage, or I'm mm -hmm. feeling the grief of this moment, mm -hmm. and then you can move on. And so we express we don't wallow. We express we don't wallow. We, uh, one, of, one of the points is that we we move to reconciliation instead of trying to resolve it or get over it. This is where it becomes a companion of, this is just gonna be a part of my life, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna swim in it. I'm not gonna stay in here forever. And by naming it, we allow it to move and it's a really normal response. So each grief, let's talk about grief. Each yeah. grief is unique. 
Each and we can honor unique. that. Absolutely. And with each one of my kids, they've all, like I still have an eight year old, she's gonna go through high school and that's gonna feel different probably than my son. But we have the big grief and then we have the little grief and like snow, you recognize snow as snow, but if you look at each single one of those snowflakes, they're each unique. And so your grief might look different than my grief and it's, that is okay. That is by design, they're yeah. just each unique. We talked about being in the community with our grief and, and having those, those outward conversations. Talk to me, Kristen, about how we can create room for both grief and joy and not feel conflicted about both of those being here. Yeah, it's that it's that nervous sided component where we're like, I'm gonna take both. I, I also love, I'm going to take gratitude and grief each one in a hand because in that moment when I'm like, oh, I am so, I'm so sad for this stage with my son and oh, I'm so grateful that I am getting to be in this moment with him mm -hmm. and see him grow up. Mm -hmm. I have thought about these moments for a long time and here they are. And so you just make room by, instead of it's either or that they're in competition with each other, it's both and, and it may be more than both. It may be multiple things. Mm -hmm. I know some moms are like, I can't wait for them to be done and get to school. Wonderful. Your grief might show up somewhere different. Just create room for all the emotions. And I'm gonna be thinking of that line, reconciliation over resolution, is that what yes. it was? Yeah, I think that one I used to think of grief is I need to resolve it. Like, okay, my pet, my, pa my pet passed away, it's been two weeks, I should move on. I gotta get over it. I gotta get over it, but in some ways, grief also keeps us connected to those feelings of love yeah. that we had, or that stage that we loved. And so I have moved to reconciliation, also not wallowing, but when I feel that grief, it helps me remember and then reflect, and then I feel joy to be like, oh, I love that moment and that memory. And so instead of being like, I've got to get over it and something's wrong, I'm still feeling this, it can keep us connected to the people and those moments that really matter to us. Well said, and I can see where, this sounds sort of therapeutic couchy, but I can see where you know processing the emotion of it, the grief of it would make more room for joy. Like it's kind of this pathway that allows us to get there in the end. It seems odd and counterintuitive, but it, it really can create the softening because you realize Life is short, these yeah. moments are fleeting. Yeah. I love this, the phrase of um, the days are long, but the years are short. Mm -hmm. And it has just, for me, allowed me to be just as present as possible in these moments. I think you expressed this so beautifully. So thank you so much. Where can we hear more from you? Um, you can find me at The Healing Group or at Kristen Hodson on Instagram. Keep sharing, because you're helping the rest of us along Thanks the way. So much. Thank you, and whew, together, yeah. together.